On Earth, there are three types of giraffoids. Giraffes, okapi, and pronghorns. Throughout Earth's history, this group was substantially more diverse, with browsers and grazers, spinters and bulky bruisers. One prehistoric giraffe described a couple weeks ago was Discocaryx, a dome-headed animal that appears to have been the best head-butting adaptations of any mammal. Although none of these living species on Earth are found in modern Chimere, the group has a long history in Chimere and is quite successful in both the known world and beyond. The very first harvest after the dynastic extinction was in North America a little over 14 million years ago. Pronghorns were at the time entering a golden age of diversity in form, size, and niche, which lasted until Earth's Pleistocene. Several species were brought to Chimere. Although the predominantly fern prairies of Chimere weren't much to the liking of these grassland specialists, they quickly established themselves as forest specialists, foraging in the wake of the calicathiers that were harvested at the same time. Calicathiers got massive and pronghorns diversified, with specialists in the fern prairies, tall trees, and thicket behind the bulldozing calicathiers. Chimeran pronghorns had a golden age of their own at this time. Twelve million years ago, titanosaurs returned to the known world, and the geological blink of an eye outcompeted most of the giant calicathiers, reclaiming Chimere for the dinosaurs. The forests became even more open at this time. Many animals specialized for the calicathir-dominated forests went extinct, but pronghorns adapted with minimal issue. Other giraffoids were brought through during the Miocene. Few outcompeted the forest pronghorns, although one lineage of basal giraffid was a large high browser which occupied a similar niche as the first calicathiers without getting in the way of the dominant titanosaurs. Discocaryx came to Chimera at this time, maintaining their grazer niche in open forests alongside their pronghorn cousins. Around 8 million years ago, the climate of Chimera became more arid. Grasslands spread throughout much of the northern continent as a result. This sparked another significant harvest, again from North America. Pronghorns were brought through at this time, and they thrived in the new grasslands, especially since so few indigenous animals were comfortable in such open spaces. They had very few predators able to catch them, and since the fast canid and feline predators struggled to defend their kills from the slower but more powerful theropods, couldn't really cache in the absence of trees, grassland pronghorns exploded in numbers and diversity, crossing to the eastern continent and subsequently flourishing there. This pronghorn utopia was unfortunately not to last in the known world. This region became humid once more. Titan Gardens returned to the northern continent. There were still grasslands, especially to the north, but the prairies became a mosaic which did not favor them as well. As wetlands and forests dominated the known world once more, the harvest from South America brought animals much better suited to this context, which then outcompeted many fauna. This wetter world became the new norm, and no harvests occurred for almost 5 million years. The harvests that came in the Pleistocene as Chimere became briefly arid included a wide range of deer species. These outcompeted forest pronghorns on both the northern and western continents. Another change at this time, which was a boon to grassland pronghorns, was the arrival of housey grass from the eastern continent. This is an extremely aggressive plant, needing little water and providing minimal nutrients. It can turn a desert into a prairie, but will also erode at forests. In fact, many naturalists speculate that it may have overtaken the northern continent entirely were it not for the floodplains and mountains hydrating the crescent jungles and seretic wetlands, and the titanosaurs gardening to the west. This grass drove many animals to extinction and triggered the African harvest that brought humans, but pronghorns that returned from the eastern continent flourished in the housey grassland habitat able to get what they needed out of the seeds and able to break down the tough stem that many herbivores struggle to digest. In modern times, two species of pronghorn are found in the Housey Prairie, both recent arrivals from the eastern continent. One, the common pronghorn, is fairly small. These animals live in small herds but are extremely common on the prairie. Males can become violently competitive in the breeding season. They are among the fastest animals in the known world, able to reach speeds of 65 miles per hour and maintain 30 mile per hour speeds for up to 6 miles. 
Only the Veracet, a sprinting hyena descended from Chasmoporthetes, is regularly able to catch them. While they're not particularly close relatives, they are the closest in appearance and niche to modern pronghorns of North America. The other pronghorn of the prairie is the giant pronghorn. These animals are also swift, although not able to reach nearly the blinding speed of their cousins, peaking at a more modest 50 miles per hour. Still sufficient in evading most predators, and their endurance is also remarkable, helping them keep ahead of the endurance-focused theropods which are such a problem for other mammalian sprinters. The forests of Picardia have offered a sanctuary to woodland pronghorns. They have still lost ground to deer, but two species are still found today. The giant antelope is a rare species mostly isolated to the spine, a peninsula branching off of the northern lowlands. They, like most pronghorns, live in small herds. Males compete more with display than other pronghorns, and males will work together to defend their herds. The more gentle nature and closer bonds of these herds, combined with the relative rarity of predators in the spine, large enough to threaten adults, has made them fairly easy to tame. Antelope riders of the spine are formidable in battle, and are an iconic hero of the folklore of these peoples. Water antelope are by far the most common hoofed animal in Picardia. They have a versatile diet and despite the name can be found in dry lowlands, tightened gardens, dense highlands, and even the Picardian mountains in addition to the wetlands they are named for. They are fast and agile, although their forested island means that they don't nearly approach the speed of the prairie pronghorns. The water antelope is quite significant to Picardian culture. Although they have been a favorite of hunters for horn and meat for thousands of years, it is in quite recent times that their significance has grown. Like all pronghorns, and unlike other ruminants, their keratin horns shed annually. The thickness, size, and shape of water antelope horns are perfect for high poundage composite shortbows. For most of history, Picardians made longbows of a single yew or hickory branch, a tradition central to the keratoan the hunters and warriors that make up most of their fighting forces. These bows are astonishingly powerful, with most Keratoan warriors usually having a draw weight between 120 pounds and over 200 pounds. In hunting this may seem excessive, although the high number of armored beasts in Picardia means that such powerful bows are useful, and they also act as a deterrent from foreign invaders whose metal armor can usually be bent or shattered against if not outright pierced by these weapons. Horn bows have been present throughout Chimere since the Mercantile Age, but it was contact with the newly formed Empire during the first trade relationships between them and the First Confederacy in the 1600s that shoe hornbow techniques were brought to Picardia. This bow and archery style was designed for use in the context of mounted archers in an arid prairie but the Picardian found great utility in having an extremely powerful bow in such a compact form while shooting from trees or in the cover of a thicket. They are much more challenging to make and maintain than long bows, and the humid air of Picardia requires adjustments in construction to include waterproofing, but these bows rapidly replaced long bows as the preferred weapon of Karato and warriors and hunters. Hunters co-opted a technique used by mounted archers against unmounted foes beneath them to shoot directly below them on a tree, and in the War of the Three Spears, when the Empire and Republic fought to conquer parts of northern Picardia for logging territory, this technique became notorious for Picardians taking and defending invader fortifications. These bows and their complements to guerrilla warfare are attributed to the failure of the Republican Empire in conquering Picardia despite both armies having superior numbers and technology. Water antelope were hunted to localized endangerment in the Three Spears. In the following years, the horns of water buffalo were used to supplement demand, but the fact that water antelope shed their horns means that now most bows are made from shed horns and preserved for later bow making which helped to take off pressure from wild populations that have since recovered to their pre-war numbers. Deer are also hunted more heavily for meat, which has also helped the water antelope in Confederacy lands recover. A reclusive and striking animal found in the Titan Gardens is the only giraffid of the known world. They are not close relatives of any living animals on Earth. Their ancestors were high browsers during the reign of the Calicathiers, 
and they are the last of this lineage. Their spiraling ossicones have earned them the name Unicorn by naturalists of the assembly. It is presumed that they are selective feeders based on the shape of their snout and long tongue. Their striking ossicones are used by males for display, and both sexes to move foliage and shove predators. Little is known of the unicorns as they are only found in the Titan Gardens and they avoid settlements, so most of what is written about them is inference and conjecture. The descendants of Disco Carex are much more diverse on the eastern continent, but one of these dome-headed giraffoids is found in the forests of the northern and western continents, the Helmeted Unicorn. They are one of the few mammals able to endure the toxins of ferns common in Titan Gardens, and it is a key to their success. Aside from dietary changes from grass-specialized ancestors, they haven't changed much in their overall appearance. Despite their impressive armaments, they are not aggressive animals and only charge smaller predators, as those who charge large theropods don't survive to pass such reckless genes onto future generations. Males still charge one another, though, and the Arvella have found that they can be ridden by jockeys and readily participate in a frightening joust. Riders aren't in control of these beasts or their encounters, but maintaining your seat while the unicorns clash is a dangerous and prestigious pastime. Although deer and bovids have largely replaced the once great diversity of chimeran giraffoids, the remaining species are a testament to the resilience and impressive physical attributes of these animals. Their diversity in the vast and competitive continent of the East further attests to their success. The different paths to success that giraffoids found on Earth compared to their cousins in Chimere helps to underscore how differences in context can significantly alter the direction a given group will take, and that had certain elements of our own history being different, we could have an entirely different cast of flora and fauna today. Cheers to Jay Stocky for providing some fantastic pronghorn and giraffoid art for this video. Cheers to my patrons for their support, and thank you all for watching. Have a great day. Cheers, folks.